is up you guys we'll go back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 toyota corolla hatchback courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because this very well may be the most reliable hatchback in existence not only that toyota does give you two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well which is pretty darn nice and there is one big change for the 2024 Corolla hatchback as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 Corolla hatch. First one being the SE starting at $23,355, which is a $350 bump from the 2023 model year. Nightshade, which is a new trim level for the 2024 Corolla hatch. That one starts at $24,355. And lastly, the XSE being the one we are in today starting at $26,655. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Corolla hatch is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 169 horsepower at 6600 rpm 151 pound feet of torque coming in at 4800 rpm power being sent to the front wheels through a cvt with paddle shifters zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.5 seconds which for comparison if you were comparing this to the corolla sedan corolla sedan comes in at 7.8 seconds so this one is actually slightly quicker there with mpg numbers coming in at 32 in the city 41 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test which we can't do right now anyways because we're sitting in construction but still wanted to mention you guys the drive modes first there's a little toggle switch located just in front of the shifter that's going to give you three different choices eco normal and sport adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now that we got all of that out of the way i'm going to wait until this construction is finished and then we're going to find it straight away we're going to put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test we're going to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right so i got the shifter slid all the way back to the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting in three two one go <laughs> yeah that actually simulates a traditional automatic extremely well it kind of feels like the paddle shifters from mercedes like back in the day a little bit where they kind of lunge you forward when you actually hit the paddle shifter so it's pretty darn fun actually going through the paddle shifters. I will say that it does simulate an automatic well. Plenty of an acceleration for merging onto the highway. It's not going to win any drag races probably, but it'll certainly get the job done. And again, the paddle shifters really surprised me there. So big fan of that. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.5 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 129 feet, which isn't the best on paper, of course. But let's just go ahead and hit the brakes since nobody's behind us. It feels, it feels fine. I got to take it out of sport driving mode, but it feels fine. It's a little bit on the softer side of things, but this is a compact car. It's not a race car, so I don't expect a super firm braking feel. And uh, yeah, it's not the case in this thing. So it feels fine for what it is. So then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, it's been great. That is one thing I always like to compare and contrast this ride quality with the Honda Civic hatchback for example because the Civic you feel so much of the road in whereas with the Corolla sedan and the Corolla hatchback it feels much more luxurious at least when you compare those two so if you favor ride quality and you were comparing those two the Corolla is definitely where it's at as far as the smooth ride goes I'll just say that as far as steering feel goes it's nice it's not quite as heavy as the Civic but it is definitely nice and you can tell the difference to between the drive mode so i still have it in sport drive mode right now and it is a much heavier steering feel than if i were to take it out and put it in that eco driving mode it does loosen up so there's a little bit of a difference there but overall it's not bad it's just pretty much what i would expect the corolla to feel like in terms of the steering feel then touching on cabin noise we're going 52 miles per hour right now get a little bit of engine noise but other than that uh road noise is being held at bay wind noise 
place is pretty much on par for the course and so no issues there and such a good visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back just looking at my rear view mirror here so you definitely shouldn't have any issues there either but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 toyota corolla hatchback all right and so here she is you guys the new 2024 toyota corolla hatchback finished in wind chill pearl which is the exact exterior color name on this one i think it looks pretty darn good i like the way it looks when the sun hits it for sure but anyways let me first touch on the nightshade trim level since that one is the new trim for 2024 that one is going to add some bronze wheels a two-toned roof essentially the roof is going to be black along with the a b and c pillar as well so it's going to give it kind of a two-toned look to it of course you're going to get some dark badging with that nightshade trim level then as well but as always let's go ahead and start with where the corolla hatch is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter j indicating that the Corolla hatchback is built and assembled in Japan, which is interesting because the 2024 Corolla sedan is actually built and assembled here in the US, but the hatch is not. Anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Gloss black front grille does come standard across the board. You will find LED headlights coming standard across the board with LED daytime running lights along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you there. Did wanna also mention though for the XSE that we have today, we will also get LED fog lights down below. You guys could see that. And again, that's specific to just the XSE trim level if you wanted those and with that nightshade trim level yet again the front lip is actually going to be finished in a gloss black as opposed to the body colored front lip you are currently looking at for the XSE which is also going to come on the SE so don't want to mention that as well but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Corolla hatch here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now let's see our round to the side of this one black window surrounds does come standard taking a look at the side mirrors body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard with LED integrated turn signals as well i absolutely love that then take a look down at the wheel setup they will differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with you're going to find 16 inch alloys for that se trim level 18 inch alloys for the xse that's what you guys are looking at right now and for the nightshade specific 18 inch bronze alloys so the wheel design and the size is going to differ amongst the trim level so i did want to emphasize that but i like the look of the wheels but let me tell you guys those bronze alloys they look absolutely amazing on the night shade but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now let's see our round to the back of this one all the way to the top body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper just below that led tail lights coming standard across the board i think they look absolutely amazing on the corolla hatch did want to also mention though you got some badging on the back end here it says subscribe and like the video so that is what that says so i've been doing this for nine years reviewing cars so if you don't mind hit the subscribe button if you're into new car reviews at least but then just down below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet it is tucked away it's on the passenger side underneath there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip But now since we are around to the back of the Corolla hatch when it comes to opening that rear tailgate of course it is a manual tailgate so simply just walk up to the back there is a rubberized button and then just simply lift up but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 17.8 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it there is a cargo cover that comes standard for all trim levels across the board there's some cargo lighting of course back there there's a little bit of indented storage found in the back corners of the Corolla hatch as well and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat which you guys know i personally prefer but then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 29.9 inches so not a ton on paper but for reference i mean even six feet tall i actually was able to fit my knees were up against the front seat but I did manage to make it work, but also rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard for all trim levels, so I liked that. And 
dual rear USB charging ports I found back there as well, which is pretty cool. But so then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the SE and nightshade trim levels. Then you're gonna find soft text upholstery for the XSE trim. That XSE trim is also gonna give you a eight way power adjustable driver's seat and then heated front seats as well. But overall seating was plenty comfortable. The bolsters on the seats actually were definitely very nice. They kind of protruded out a little further. So held you in place a little bit better around the corner. So I definitely was a big fan of the seating in the Corolla hatch here but then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it will be leather wrapped for all trim levels then as well then make our way to the startup it is a pretty basic key got your Toyota logo of course but basically it's just lock and unlock that is it but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button and so once started up there are two different gauge clusters available so you got the analog cluster which comes on the SE and nightshade trim level with a very small digital screen front and center but then there is the seven inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard on the xse that we have today that is definitely the better one no doubt i love this it gives you outside temperature how many miles you have left to empty trip a trip b of course and just about everything you could possibly want and that's the beauty of digital gauges you can configure it how you like but then make our way to overall interior quality you're going to find a frameless rear view mirror with home link controls that's optional that's a 175 dollar option that's one that i would personally prefer i like that wireless phone charger for the xse trim level automatic climate control for the se and nightshade trims dual zone climb control for the XSE trim level, cup holders behind the shifter, of course, and uh, electromechanical parking brake as well. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that center armrest, you will find a little bit of storage. It's not a ton, but didn't want to mention it though. But if you don't go with the wireless phone charger like we have today, just imagine that's just going to be basic rubberized storage up there, just to, just to let you know. But I do like the two-tone color theme in the Corolla here, and uh, overall, it'll definitely get the job done. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here. 8-inch color touchscreen display does come standard across the board. Bluetooth and audio streaming as well. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay coming standard. So yes, you don't have to plug your phone up with a USB cable or anything like that. It's all wireless. Gotta love that. Check out your driving statistics up there along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's two of them. You're going to find six speakers with the SE and Nightshade. And then an eight-speaker JBL sound system coming with the XSE trim level. So having said that, we do have with us the eight speaker JBL sound system. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, there's a ton of bass with that JBL sound system for sure. It was kind of rumbling the car a little bit. Like that was nice. I remember my very first car was an Acura RSX. I had an external JBL subwoofer in the trunk and this is a JBL sound system. So I know that the JBL brand has been around for quite a while now. So a very reputable company and yes, that sound system sounded dang good in the Corolla hatchback. And so, but then last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Corolla hatch in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, so that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags do come standard. You got a driver's knee airbag up front. There is a passenger seat cushion airbag as well well and rear seat mounted side impact airbags so those last two is definitely something you typically don't find standard on other vehicles out there and a lot of times it's going to be even a several hundred dollar option as well so well done toyota for that also in the back though you got latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard toyota safety sense 3.0 that gives you a proactive driving assist pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist dynamic radar cruise control road sign assist and lane tracing assist as well then if you were to go with the xse trim level that is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here are the corolla hatch great reliability in this thing that has been proven over time of course great safety as well you cannot beat an ihs top safety pick plus the digital gauges are great i definitely was a big fan of that the other gauge cluster is 
super basic. I've definitely experienced that one and uh, not a whole lot going on to it. Both sound systems though are pretty darn good. I will say that. Even the six speaker sound system is probably one of the best, if not the best six speaker sound system that I've heard. JBL sound system in this one today, absolutely amazing. As far as room for improvement goes, the rear seat legroom is definitely on the minimal side of things. The quick fix to that is just get the Corolla sedan and I uh, wouldn't have minded seeing some multicolor ambient lighting in this thing as well. I think that would do pretty darn good. All right, so but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.